in my group, our core focus is basically trying to understand how light interacts with small scale structures or low dimensional systems. And the idea here is to understand how light interacts at these small length scales. And then we engineer these interactions to make very useful devices. We sometimes fabricate devices, nano devices, in the screen room. And then we bring our devices into our optics lab to uh, measure the electrical signals when we shine the light on it. Currently, the electron, uh, electronic devices, they work by measuring the number of electrons that flow in a circuit. Uh, but spintronics, the idea is to encode more information in electron spin, in the spin of electron. So likewise, if we extend the idea to optics, uh, most optical devices, for example, detectors, they work by counting the number of photons. But photons have more degrees of freedom, for example, photon spin. So just like in spintronics, one can you know, utilize the spin of electron to encode more information and extract more information. Our idea is, can we utilize the photon spin, can we uh, you know, utilize that degree of freedom and encode more information and extract more information? With the studies of, on this optoelectronic measurements, we know more about how light and uh, matter interacts and how light excites like um, different kinds of fermions, like wild fermions, direct fermions, and then those can be used in on-chip applications like uh, spintronic devices and routers and sensors that can both use the light orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. If your optical devices are two or three orders of magnitude more than your electronic devices, then there's a size mismatch. So what we've been trying to focus is trying to reduce the length scale of silicon-based photonics down to tens of nanometers. We are trying to make you know, modulators, uh, silicon-based Raman lasers down to that length scale. And the idea here is that we can uh, interface optical devices at the same length scale as silicon-based electronic devices. So photon spin part is taken care of. We've shown that very nicely. And orbital angular momentum is uh, you know, detecting that is something that we are currently working on. Part of my group is also working on trying to understand and engineer light matter interactions in atomically thin materials called two-dimensional semiconductors. So there are, uh, there are these class of materials called transition metal dichalcogenides, uh, which are nothing but an atomically thin uh, sheet of material. So because the material is highly confined, it has very interesting optical properties. You can pattern uh, metallic uh, lattices and arrays on top. And so the those uh, arrays can support some uh, plasmonic and optical mode, and they can couple to the semiconductor. And we also pattern uh, electrical contacts on, on top of the sample, so we can uh, control the optical and electrical properties by uh, applying the voltage. Uh, these are the arrays we pattern. Uh, under, like the, this is the bright field image and dark field image. These are arrays uh, made of silver and with different uh, size of the nanoparticles and also different pitches. That's why they appear in different colors. You can have resonance with photons for different energies and uh, you can tune it in resonance with the material or out of resonance with the material so they can have different interactions with them. We can confine light in two dimensional and also we can control the light, like control how it propagates and how it interacts, and then we can uh, tune it electrically. What we have shown is we can get very strong interactions and collective oscillations of these polaritons. And the idea here is, since we have a collective excitation in the system, if we manipulate anything at any remote corner of the device, we can get dramatic differences in the optical properties. So you can, you know, one, can uh, one can make modulators, modulated lasers and many other optical devices. In my opinion, we are very, very innovative in the kind of experiments that we design. And our experiments typically stand out. We are very thorough in what we do. We are very careful in what we do. And we combine input from theory, uh, design of new experiments, new materials. It's a good, healthy mixture of all these uh, unique ingredients. And, and this is the reason why some of the results we see, we are typically one of the first ones to see these results.